Hey everyone, welcome back. Now, I know in a previous video, uh, I had shown a Z80 assembly language program that contained uh, assembler directives, and I had mentioned that we were going to be taking a detailed look at that program in an upcoming video, possibly the next video. Well, it turned out that I lied because there's actually more information that we need to go through before we're ready to take a detailed look at that program. So I decided to make at least a couple of videos to fill in the gaps of the information that we're going to need in order to understand the information that we're going to be looking at there. But I'll try and go through this information fairly quickly so we're not waiting too long to get a look at that program again. And the topic of today's video is something that I think is maybe confusing but very important in programming in Z80 assembly language. Now, I'm not an expert, obviously, in Z80 assembly language, and I don't know all the different techniques in creating a program in assembly language yet, but I know that one issue that can be a problem with creating Z80 assembly language programs is the lack of variables. So as we know in basic programming, we have lots of variables we can use, and it's very easy to use variables to store values and we can use them in calculations and we can print them and do all kinds of things with them. But in assembly language, there are no variables. So how can we get around this and how can we recreate the functionality of variables in a Z80 assembly language program when we don't actually have variables at our disposal? So I know of, uh, well, at least one method we can use and there may be other methods, I'm not sure, but today I'm going to just explore the topic briefly so we can see at least one way we can get around this limitation. So let me open my ZX Spin emulator today. And if you want to follow along with me, which there's really not much to follow along with today, but there is a little bit. So if you want to follow along, feel free to open up uh, the ZX Spin emulator on your computer. And I have a video you can watch if you like to find out how to install it, which also gives a kind of a brief overview of the ZX Spin environment, which is a really fantastic environment, I think for beginners, wanting to learn how to program for the ZX Spectrum computers. It's not specifically designed for the ZX Spectrum Next computer, but it sure is a big help in uh, starting us off on our programming journey for at least regular Sinclair Spectrum computers. So let's take a look at that right now. Okay, now, so I've got my ZX Spin emulator on the screen now, as well as my assembler. And I've just entered a short program into my assembler here, and let's take a look at it. So the first line is our org instruction, which we all know by now what that does. It stores our machine code program at a particular memory address. In this case, it's going to start at address 30,000. So when we execute our machine code program, we're going to be calling it at address 30,000. And now let's take a look at the next line of our program, which says LDHL comma MyVar. So MyVar is a label, which remember now we want to try to use a label in combination with a memory address to duplicate the functionality of a variable. So our program ends here at this return instruction. And following this, we have another instruction, which is actually an assembler directive that we covered in a previous video. And here we have a label called myVar, which has a defined byte instruction after it, which can also be written as DB. You don't have to actually spell out the entire DEFB for this particular assembler. So I could, let's say, erase the E and the F and db in this case would also represent defined byte for this assembler. And what this defined byte instruction does, as we discussed in that previous video, is it tells the assembler to store a byte of data at a particular memory location. And the memory location in this case will be the memory location that is pointed to by this label called myVar. And the data value will be this value here, which is 10 in decimal. So if we go back up to our line two here, we see that this instruction says load HL comma my var. So it's going to load the HL register pair with a value that is stored in the my var label. And in this case, our program is using the my var label to point to a particular memory address, which that memory address is storing this value of 10. And we're going to use this my var label in combination with this memory address to duplicate the functionality of a variable. So let's take a look at the next line in our program now which is increment HL in brackets. And in this case, we're going to be using the increment instruction to increment the value being stored at that memory address. So let's go ahead and assemble our program now. 
And if we take a look at this pop-up window, you see here there's transfer labels to debugger option, which we looked at in our previous video that transfers our labels over to the debugger, which is exactly what we want to do. So I have that option enabled, as well as here's another interesting selection we can look at, which says case sensitive labels. And this will determine whether our labels are case sensitive. So in this case, I don't want to have to worry about which letters in my labels are capitalized and which aren't. So I'm going to leave this option disabled and go ahead and assemble my program now. Now let's go take a look at it in our debugger. So first let's go ahead and take a look at our labels tab here by clicking on it. And you can see it's brought over our MyVar label and we can see the value that's been assigned to this label, which in this case is 30,005. So that is indicating the memory address of our Z80 assembly language program over here, which contains this byte of 10 that we stored there using the define byte instruction. So now let's take a look at our program in our disassembly window here. And we'll just go to the address where we've saved it, which is 30,000. And here at address 30,000, we see LDHL comma MyVar, which is what we have in the first line of our assembly language program over here. And then we have our other instructions, INC HL followed by return. And we can see here that address 30,005 contains a value of 10, which is exactly what we would expect because we stored that value over here in our assembly language program using the define byte instruction right here. And we stored a value of 10 at some location in memory that is pointed to by this myvar label. And our label listing over here shows us that myvar contains a value of 30,005, which means it's pointing to a memory address of 30,005. So our disassembly window shows that address 30,005 down here contains the value of 10, which we stored there in our assembly language program. So let's go ahead and step through our program. And our first instruction here will be LDHL comma myvar, which will load the HL register pair with whatever value is contained in the myvar label, in this case being 30,005. So let's change our program counter here to point to the address 30,000, which is where the first instruction of our assembly language program lives in memory. And now if we click the step button here, we would expect the HL register pair to change to equal the value that's stored in myvar, which we know now is 30,005. From our labels window here, 30,005. So let's go ahead and step through this instruction and we'll watch this HL register value change. And there you go, HL now contains the value of 30,005, which it extracted from that myvar label. So now we have an increment instruction, which normally in, let's say a basic program, when you want to change or modify the value of a variable, you would simply perform an operation on that variable, such as you would add a value to the variable or you would manipulate that variable somehow, use it in a calculation or whatever you want to do. But since in assembly language, we don't have variables, we do have memory addresses and labels. So we're going to use memory addresses and labels together to kind of act as variables. So in this case, we're using the increment instruction to increment the value that's stored in a memory location. And in this case, the memory location is pointed to by the HL register pair, which we just extracted from our myvar label and contains a value of 30,005. So over here, we can see in our debugger listing, the memory address 30,005 contains the value of 10, which we stored there manually in our Z80 assembly language program here using our define byte instruction. And even though our debugger here shows us that the Z80 assembly language instruction that corresponds to the value of 10 is LDA comma BC here, we're not interested in that instruction because we're only using this memory address to store a byte of data. For example, we might use this address to store the score for a player in our game, or maybe the health for the player in our game or any other attribute value we want to store because remember we're trying to use it as a variable so in this case we want to increment that variable the same way we might want to increment a player's score for example and in this case we're going to increment the value that's located in the memory address 30,005 so let's go ahead and step through that and we'll see what happens so there now we can see the address 30,005 contains a value of 11 so it incremented by 1 so this is an example of how we can use labels in an assembly language program combined with memory locations to kind of simulate the functionality that we would normally use variables for 
in, let's say, a basic program. So in Z80 assembly language, it's a bit more complicated because we can't actually manipulate variables directly. We need to use instructions that can manipulate the contents of memory addresses. Although we can use labels to point to those memory addresses, we still need to make sure that we have access to instructions that allow us to do what we want to do in order to manipulate the values that are stored in those addresses. So you can see it's a little different in the way we can do this functionality in assembly language compared to basic, but actually I think it's a bit more interesting and fun doing it this way because we kind of have to figure out the best way to do things. So you might want to go ahead and take a look at some other instructions that manipulate memory address locations and see what other operations are available to us to kind of manipulate the data similarly to how we would manipulate the value contained within a variable. All right, so now we kind of have an idea how we can use memory addresses combined with labels to reproduce the functionality that we would normally use variables for. And I think we can still get the same functionality out of these processes that we would normally use, although we just have to go about it a little different way, which is kind of a more interesting way and a kind of a fun way to do it. So that's one more tool in our game development toolbox that we can use to develop programs. And we're just getting one step closer to making some games. So thanks again for watching and we'll see you in the next video.